Welcome back to the hopefully last part of the PW80 build. And I know I said the last episode was the last part, but if you watch that episode, you know why this project hasn't been finished yet. And the reason is that engine's making a lot of not happy noises. And there's a couple options here. The first option is that I'm gonna ride the thing around and the noise just goes away and everything's great. The more probable option is I'm taking that engine apart again. I've been looking at parts to do the bottom end and I can buy a whole Yamaha crank and connect it rod and bearings and stuff and it's like 170 bucks, which is a lot. And I really don't wanna spend that because I've already spent enough on this thing. And then there's no name brand ones that are like 30 to $50 for that same unit, which seems way too cheap. And I really don't wanna do this a third time. So I don't know if I wanna take a leap of faith and I have ordered, I hope the right size chain. And once we have that and have that installed, there's nothing from stopping me from riding this around, which I'm gonna do. With that being the case, I think I'm just gonna throw on the chain, throw on the brakes, and just ride it, and we'll go from there. So yeah, we'll just jump right into it. I went ahead and ordered some newer components. I ended up ordering a new brake lever. This one's got like a reinforced brass sleeve to it, so hopefully it won't do the same thing that this one did, where it like wallered out the hole, and then I got just a new cable. For the rear brakes, I ordered all new stuff. I found this as a complete unit used, but then I priced it out versus new used was more expensive for whatever reason. So we're going with new. I have no idea how this thing goes together. Like that maybe? I've only seen the pictures of this thing, so not totally sure. So what I'm gonna do now is I've ordered what I believe to be the right length chain. I have a suspicion it's gonna be a link or so too long because the way I eyeballed it, I was thinking it was gonna be 87 links, including the master link. And I can only order 86 or 88, and I'd rather have too much than too little. So I went with 88 and I'm gonna just put it on here, see if it's right. If it is, great. If it's not, I'm gonna mark it and cut it separately. Issue number one, this bolt is too long. Or maybe I need to put the head of the bolt on this side and then nut on the other side, because it hits the chain. It's an interesting design feature. Okay, so we have one link too many. Right now the wheel is almost all the way forward, which gives me adjustability for tightening it once this chain loosens. I'm gonna cut, just cut the one link out. I was right, it was 87. The other option would be to just move the tire back and hope I can get one link's worth out of it, which I don't think so, but even if I do do that, when this chain stretches, it will uh, be like forever loose, unless I take a link out because there's no, that, I, if doing so I limit all adjustability. Okay, so as of right now, I went ahead and cut the chain, removed one link from it, went to go tighten it, stripped out the threads on this one, this adjuster, the other one's okay, but even so, that's that's what we're dealing with. I did take it for a quick ride. The only thing I noticed so far was it's running rich, obviously, because the mixture's for break-in. The seat's not mounted to anything, so every time you hit the throttle, the seat will slide back. So that's my temporary fix until I buy a body. The clutches seem to be really, I guess, they're sticking or something, because every time we shift gears, I think the thing lurches, which I'm gonna go put a GoPro on and ride around so I can show you guys what I'm talking about.
Okay, so to go over a couple things, I don't know if you noticed in the video, coming up the hill, I had it in, I believe, second, and it was just bogging and dying, I think just because the uh, it's running super rich. The other thing is the brakes suck. The front cable's new, so I'm assuming it just has to stretch, and also I can probably still tighten it some more if I really wanted to. And the back ones should just need to be tightened more as well. The chain, obviously, is still loose, so that needs the new tensioner, so I'll order those and then not use an impact on it this time. Every time I would change gears, the bike itself would buck because the I think the clutches are sticking, which should loosen itself in time, but also when I go to the bottom end, I can take them all apart and clean them and make sure they're still good to go. And for now, I'm just going to pull the, like let this cool down and then pull the top end off and look at the rings, replace them if need be. Like the thing, it seems healthy, as far as riding it, besides, you know, bogging, I, that noise isn't going away. So I'm really thinking it's not going to go away. So I'm going to go ahead and order the crank bearings and the connecting rod bearings, and maybe just the connecting rod too, because all of, everything in there got exposed to a lot of heat when they ran it without oil. So I'd rather just replace things that could be compromised instead of just hoping it's okay like I did last time. So now that it's had a chance to cool down, I'm going to go ahead and pull the intake off and then pull the top end off. And we're going to inspect it, see what the situation is with the rings and the opening of the exhaust port. If it looks good, put it back together with new gaskets, it'll be fine. If not, either replace the gaskets, chamfer the exhaust port, whatever we gotta do. So it's not horrible in here so far. We've got an oily mixture. It's a little gritty. Okay, I ripped the bottom gasket. That's whatever. It uh, have a replacement already. The bore looks really good. Looks pretty good. No scoring, no discoloration. I see a little up and down wear versus the standard cross hatching that the cylinder has. But that doesn't really tell me a whole lot either. This looks good. I'm going to go ahead and pull one of these rings off and check the ring gap because that's something I didn't do to begin with. But uh. The fact that this top end all looks good tells me it is indeed the bottom end. I had a suspicion that's what it was, and I've already ordered the parts that I need, but it sucks that it wasn't something more simple. So what I ended up doing was I priced out all my options versus OEM crank assembly, just a connecting rod and bearings and crank bearings, and aftermarket cheap crank. The other determining thing was I think you have to use a hydraulic press to press out the center pin that the connecting rod sits on and that's how you separate the crank and I don't have a press and I don't know anyone who does so that to me was is like a big determining factor on what I want to do. I got new adjusters here. Okay. Seems to be about even. I'm gonna pull the top end off and sand these fins just so you can get a little design out of it. And since I'm basically waiting until the crank shows up, I'm gonna see if I, what that looks like. So first do the oil, pull the head off and sand it, and then we'll go from there. The other reason I wanna drain this and put it into a clear container is that this was technically the break-in oil. It's just a matter of like being able to inspect it and see where we're at. And it looks okay so far, but this is gonna go on the shelf and sit, which will give it time to settle so I can look, see if anything separates out of it. I don't know if it's metal debris or dirt on the plug, but otherwise it looks pretty good so far. It's still red, which I think it went in clear. So it's definitely mixed with some of the trans fluid. And it also doesn't seem to be very translucent anymore. It's definitely hazy, but that may just be aeration from being dumped out right now. I see lots of air bubbles. So we'll let, like once that's out, we'll let it sit and see what settles at the bottom of this container. All right, so I went ahead and got the fins filed. I've spent some time cleaning up the old head and I got everything filed except for like some of these front pieces. 
and also this, I didn't realize this one had a broken fin, but I actually don't mind this at all. I've got everything like where I'm happy with it, and I do like the still used look while also having like this. So like I think it has adds character. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I figured I'm not gonna film every part of this, but I wanted to give you an update as to where we're at currently. So I went ahead and took apart the clutches, clutch assembly. I haven't taken them apart apart, like each piece apart, just because I didn't want to risk losing anything. This looks a lot more complicated than the blaster setup. But I'm figuring some of the clutch friction plates are stuck to the like the metal plates. And I think that's gonna loosen up in time, so I'm not gonna mess with this. I didn't find anything else really surprising. There's a decent amount of dirt in the transmission and the, like the bottom of the crankcase, like in the where the actual fluid is. So I wanted to show you what the discovery is that I found. Besides the dirt, I didn't find anything really too bad with the parts I've taken off so far. But I already knew that it was playing this, but now that I've done some research, I know this is bad. So up in like side to side play, there's a decent amount. And then forward and back play, there's a tiny bit. Not really enough to see, but definitely here. And then listen to this bearing. It just sounds so horrible. This is the other thing I wanted to show you. So I got a new crank. Looks pretty good. Everything looks like nice about it. Um, it came with new bearings, new seals, like really standard stuff. Oh, I checked the ring gap. I pulled the one of the rings off and measured it and it was within spec. So that's good in regards to the cylinder head and that piston being compatible. I was worried that maybe the Chinese head and the Pro X piston wouldn't cooperate, but uh, they do. So that's really good. All right. So here's where we're at now. I did finally get the case apart. It took a while to get the crank to separate from the crank bearings and also to get the gear selector out since that was basically skewered through the whole case. The only thing I've noticed so far is down in the lower portions of the engine is like a uh, metally paste. So that's pretty neat. No idea what that's about. But everything else looks really good. There's a little like discoloration here. I don't know if that's part of manufacturing, but it does look like heat discoloration, so that's interesting. And then, otherwise, everything else looks really good. And the bearings for the trans look okay, both the needle bearing here and the regular bearing here. Those look good. Crank looks horrible, as we expected. And also, sounds horrible. Surprise. But yeah, pretty easy. Uh, the, there's, the amount of RTV that's here doesn't look like some idiot slopped a bunch on and just like slapped the case together without it curing. So I'm thinking this is actually factory seal. All right, so here's where we're at currently. I went ahead and got all the scaling and corrosion or as much as I could get off easily off. And this is all nice and clean. Got everything cleaned up in here. Got the new seal or bearings in, got the new seals in. So now it's just a matter of putting the crank in, putting it, the two halves back together, sealing with RTV. So this is what I'm gonna end up using for the case. And this is what Nissan and Subaru use for a majority of their engine components, so I know it's rated for heat, I know it's rated for oil, and I already have it in stock. So that'll work for me as long as it's not dried since the last time I used it. But yeah, so it's gonna be a matter of putting a bead all around the edge, putting the case down, tightening it till the, the gas can be just starts squishing out, letting it cure for like an hour, and then compressing it down so it doesn't just squirt out all the RTV into the case and stuff. So we're just gonna keep moving on this, and then it should be back in the dirt bike shortly. So this is the body and uh, I ended up going with black. So yeah, that's what we went with. And the blue is fine, but it's kinda, I don't care for it. So I'd rather go with something I prefer. I figured the red should be carried on somewhere else in the design, so I went and got red vacuum line. I'm gonna go and throw this stuff on. I bet this looks like we went backwards, which we did. To start off, I'll just say what I did wrong. I made the assumption that since the old crank was super easy to remove from the block, that the new one would be just as easy to install. And as a result of that decision, I never bought the proper crank install and removal tool. 
So this is the end result. As you can see, that is uh, not cylindrical anymore because I hammered the hell out of it and properly destroyed it. So what I did was when I found this crank initially, there was only a few options on the market. There was the factory one for 160. Then there was like PW80 only, or PW only rather. And theirs were like 30. And then there was this one, which there was actually a bunch on eBay that I found, but I found this one, which was I think 70, so 70 or 80. But I contacted the seller and said, hey, you know, I know this isn't your fault or even your problem, but I destroyed this, so can I like get a discount on ordering a new one? And they're like, no, but we do have a warranty, so you know, we'll honor it this time. So that's super awesome of them. And I went ahead and linked their uh, eBay store in the description. Got a new crank on the way. And since I'm not doing this again, I went ahead and ordered the right crank install tool just to do this properly and professionally. So here's where we're at right now. I got the crank fully seated. This time I didn't damage the threads because I had the right proper pulling and removing tool and install tool. Uh, everything's in place, but not tight. The case is not tightened to spec yet. I've left all the bolts just hand tight for now so that the RT has time to cure. And then probably in the next like 10 to 20 minutes, I'm gonna tighten it down to the 61 inch pounds that these require. And then hopefully it won't squish out the RTV so that like it will actually form a seal versus just all squishing out every orifice. Then once that's done, uh, I'm gonna let this thing sit for 24 hours and then I can put fluid in it. So I couldn't find a torque pattern for these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in opposing. So go here, go here, go here, go down here, wherever that one is up there and you know, and around. So that this thing all seats nice and evenly. And then, like I said, it's supposed to be 61 inch pounds or 5.1 foot pounds. All right, so it's done. I didn't bother filming, putting the engine back in or finishing the engine up or running the new vacuum lines and vent lines, which are the, the red ones, just because it's tedious and this episode's already running long. So right now it's done, everything's mounted. I'm probably gonna go over again and just double check every single bolt I can find just to make sure it's still tightened. But as of right now, everything important is torque to spec. The engine sounds good. Everything seems perfect. So now it's just a matter of rolling it outside once it's not late at night, doing the break in, changing the oil in it, running that for a full gas tank's worth and then changing it a second time. And then from then on out, running the oil on a regular interval. from today. There's a few changes I'd like to make in the upgrades department. Mostly the fuel mixture and or a tract on a vacuum leak 
because as you can tell from the video, the thing bogged really bad. Like I didn't even have, I wasn't even able to use their gears only first and second. And even then it was struggling. So the mixture of the tank still like 15 or 20 to one for break-in. I didn't bother to mix more. So that's, that could be the problem by itself. Either way, uh, this project's officially done. I'm not gonna make another episode about it unless something drastic changes. Cause uh, the stuff I wanna do to it's small and it's not really worth filming, I don't think. I don't think it'd be very entertaining. Uh, you may see videos of riding it or just in the background of other videos, but this officially is done and I'm gonna just move on to something else, which I do have more planned. So with that all being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned.